Byrne standing by with one of the top contenders to be on the pole. He's been on the pole two times in a row here, Jeff Gordon. Ken, according to the uh, stopwatches of practice, Jeff was pretty quick. What do you think, Jeff? You got a good starting spot. Well, we were pretty quick during the day, but uh, some guys have uh, clicked out some pretty quick laps. Uh, Ricky Craven, uh, you know, he, he definitely got a great lap. So, you know, as the sun goes down, hopefully uh, the track will get a little bit quicker. I'm just, I'm really, I feel like we're going to get a good lap, but I'm pretty nervous about some of the guys that are behind us that, that is going to have even better weather. Well, let's ask the crew chief. How about it? Hey, Ray, what do you think you got tonight? I can't hear you. How quick are you guys going to be tonight? Uh, we're going to have to run better than a 50 for sure if we want to get on the pole, but I'm expecting this car right behind us to run pretty fast, and then our, our teammate Terry. I think Terry's the sleeper. What kind of tires are you going to run on? Uh, good years. <laughs> oh, okay, played that one close. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, Lakes out of the top 25 is Ed Barrier, whose time was 178.8. Ed, 178.8 is now in jeopardy as Gordon comes on the track. Well, I'll guarantee you he'll leave nothing to chance. This kid's going to give it everything he has. You talk about a guy that can run Charlotte Motor Speedway, Jeff Gordon can. And the numbers prove that. He's only run six times here in a Winston Cup car. In those six runs, he's got three poles, a win, a second, and a fifth. At Grand National, the last two times he ran, he won the pole and the race. This guy gets around. 183.8 is the record. It belongs to this man set in qualifying a year ago. He did a 29-370, and he is the 1994-600 winner. Here he comes out of Pittsburgh, Indiana, down to take the checkers, Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a new pole sitter for the Coca-Cola 600, and the crowd's hooping it up. 29.384-183-773. Not a record, but within a tick. Ken, I have to tell you, he didn't have a great second turn over there. If he'd have got through turn two, he would have been right down on the flat, I think. He was really flying around the race track. After the none, none of those Chevys are down on the line, are they? No, they're all. Can't read those zeros for eights in his little bloody thing. All right, we'll be back in a moment with more of the action. And let's go down with Randy and the man who's currently on the pole. Well, Jeff Gordon, get a little congratulations from his crew chief, Ray Evans. Hey, great run for you. Just missed your qualifying record here for the 600. Well, you know, I, I, tell, I really didn't think we'd go that fast. And uh, there's cars capable of going even faster out there. So before I say too much, I want to see those guys. But well, I'm real happy. Uh, I got to thank uh, the guys at uh, Hendrick Motors, uh, Motorsports, especially in the engine shop. They built a great engine for me. And I'm sure Terry will say the same thing and Kenny. Uh, and these guys, Ray made a gutsy call. You know, we changed cars to, uh, to bring out here this week from last week. And I think we made the right call. I know we did for Sunday. Whether or not for tonight, we'll have to wait and see. Congratulations on a good run. I don't know how much of a gutsy call that was. I think you needed the new car. Yeah, 22. this one obviously wasn't the right uh, The one we had Saturday obviously wasn't the right one. Jeff Gordon cordially signing a few autographs after winning the poll. Nice smile. Good for you guys. $41,000, not bad in the kitty, and another poll here for the 600. This place has been really good to us. And, uh, you know, it's all about combination. And uh, between Hendrick Motorsports, DuPont Automotive Finishes, Ray Evernham, those Rainbow Warriors, and myself, we've got a great combination here. It's good to be in the Bush Clash, man. We've been trying to get in that that thing all year long and we've been so close and terry's been knocking us off these poles here lately and uh feels good feels real good got the toro tractor too for you jeff hey yeah i don't know if i get to take that up to the power outlet but uh you know i own a, a toro tractor dealership so uh and that's really how that all came about the relationship with winning the poles and them giving the toro tractors uh i'm sure pop hendrick's gonna take this one though and uh, maybe we can sell a couple up at the power outlet does the speed of qualifying in any way automatically transfer to how that car is going to work over 600 miles well you know this this car seems to have a little bit better downforce than the car that we had uh, for the winston select who knows uh you know i think that we're going to have to work pretty hard to uh to keep up with those fords there uh, they seem to be really really strong when it comes to long runs and uh, they got a lot of downforce now and you know hey i think things are about as even as they've ever been we just we got to be a team we've got to come together it's all about pit stops and and how well you do on the track and uh, I think this is one of the best teams in the garage. So I, I feel pretty good about Sunday. I hope you have fun Sunday. We're going to have fun watching it. Ah, looking forward to it. Now, now, wait a minute. We've still got one for the third straight time. 
Ah, the Indiana fireman is there, ready to go. It'll be Jeff Gordon bringing him down for the 600 at 5 o'clock, a little thereafter on Sunday. Buddy Baker and Dick Bergen, Randy Pemberton, Steve Burns, and Cindy Sisson. Ken Squire bidding you good evening from the Charlotte Motor Speedway, where those two guys will bring him down to start the 37th annual Coca-Cola 600 come Sunday afternoon at the mile and a half Charlotte Motor Speedway. Congratulations, gentlemen.